Welcome into Primetime Picks on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Corey, it's time to make some money. It's time to make money. We haven't it's done that. Me, yeah, we haven't we haven't been making money as of late, but we've been all right. Yeah. I've been uh we won't say that word on here. Again. Yeah, we only have a couple weeks left in the NFL, so we've got to make it happen now. We have to make it count. The Packers season's over. Is it? It's over. Ah, it's over. The remaining three games, nah. they could still be in run the table mode. Nah. They have to run the table. I don't think we will. Well, we should, right? We're, we're not playing anybody that's, like, good by any means. Yeah, Danny DeVito's out of the way. You don't have to <sighs> again. Gosh. I don't know. It's so bad. And now the locker room's falling apart. Jair Alexander deleted, like, everything off of his socials. That's Packers-related. Yeah. Devondre Campbell tweeted out that he's not answering – or he said in a press conference that he's not answering anything about the Internet in regards to his tweet – where he was saying, I'm done playing through injuries. I'm yep. done with all done this. Done playing for other people. Yep. <sighs> I don't even know who to blame. Maybe that's a LaFleur thing. Maybe it's just Joe Barry. Joe Barry's an easy scapegoat, so I always do want to blame him. That's been the number one question in Packers locker rooms. What it's, do you think of Joe Barry? And they've all been pretty mature about it. They're not exactly saying they love him, but they're not exactly yeah. saying they hate him either. I don't know. Hey, at least your team didn't lose on a faulty Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah. That was... In Darnell Mooney's breadbasket. Yeah, but can you blame him? Yes. You can? Okay. All right. All right. All right. I mean, that's a bang-bang bang play. Alone. We right. should not have been in that spot. Yeah. There were multiple parts of that game where, yeah, I don't know. There was a bootleg for Fields where DJ Moore would have been wide open if Darnell blocked. Mm -hmm. I can blame Darnell Mooney not specifically for that play, but I'd say, like, for his performance as a whole, the pass rush was getting home every play. But that was – I was just, I was with my girlfriend over the weekend. I'm like, that was our season in a nutshell. Yeah. That's their team in a nutshell. Yeah. That's it the most is. Bears loss you could ever have. It's very Eberflus <laughs> for that to happen that yeah. way. And yeah, the Packers now have given the NFC Player of the Week award to back to back oh quarterbacks, <laughs> Tommy DeVito and Baker Mayfield. So, you know, our picks haven't been good. Our teams haven't been good. We have to turn it around. I think I've said that for like three weeks straight. Yeah. But this is Primetime Picks, the show where Corey and I talk fantasy football, we talk gambling. Gambling for the weekend of the NFL. Um, and then we'll have some Packers props and other things to go over. I already started by talking about the Packers. Uh, we can move on from that game. It was a disaster. The Packers offense looks good. That's the good part about this. We found our franchise quarterback. That's important. Keep the positives out there because it's a lot of negatives right now. And then there's, there's quitting on your season, which it feels like what the Packers are starting to do. Not the offense, but the, the defense is becoming a disaster, and they're unraveling. Right. And I don't think they're going to quit on the season altogether. But what the Chargers did on <laughs> Thursday night, that is quitting on your season. That's quitting on Staley. That's quitting uh, on Brandon Staley. They lost, I believe it was 63-21 to with Easton Stick as their quarterback against Aiden McConnell. The Raiders were shut out in the game prior yeah. to last Thursday. Yeah, blow up. And then they scored 63 points. At halftime, they had 35 points, which is more points than they had the entire in, – in any game up to that point. Um, so the Chargers, I'm really glad that I canceled them, and I can talk about that again later. But the Chargers are just a disaster. Now next year, they're going to be $45 million over the cap, and there's going to be changes. And the irony is that money went to the defense. Most yeah. of that money went to the defense. Um, for me – I said, yeah, why on earth would any team make it close against the Panthers? And the Panthers won outright against the Falcons. So, great. <laughs> that was my loss. Uh, Vikings and Bengals was a push right at minus three for the Bengals and an anytime touchdown hit. If there's anything I learned, it's that you don't mess around with division matchups and claim that they're going to be blowouts. Those teams know each other. I'll apply that logic a little bit later. But also, I used to use touchdown reliance as a stigma, and I still will for fantasy. I think you can be very inconsistent and get yourself in a world of trouble if you just rely on touchdowns. But for any time touchdowns, Kyron Williams is the only person in that backfield right now. So anytime I feel like the Rams are going to be competitive and not get blown out, I'm pretty confident he'll get in. He got in. I'm up to five and six in that category at least. I'm not even going to talk about my other record, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially like guys like Jake Ferguson or yep. people like that where they'll get you three catches, four catches, but one of them has to be a touchdown in order for you to yep. really want to put them in your fantasy Rams lineup. Looks. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, talking about Packers props, uh, last week, I think pretty much every offensive prop that we talked about would have hit. Uh, the Jordan Love, we didn't have really specific numbers, but the Jordan Love over passing yards, that one have gone over. He, he looked great. Um, another great game for him. Jaden Reed had another good game. A.J. Dillon still just can't score. 
he can't score, and yeah. he hasn't scored in so long. And he's actually like I used to dump on him earlier in the season when he was really struggling, and last year he didn't look great. He's he looked fine this year. It's none of this is his fault. The offense looks fine. Not worried about that. But any def- defensive prop that you might consider, any one that they might offer you. Do not take it with this Packers defense because they can't stop anything. And it honestly feels like Joe Barry doesn't try to stop anything. He barely lets them play. It's a disaster. Yeah, lots of cushion in the secondary. I feel like that's starting to be a really common theme. So maybe if you're going to take any prop related to the defense, you go over passing yards. Yeah. Dare I say Bryce Young? I don't know. I don't know. There's been some people saying they're going to slap that this week. If you try that, I this might not be the show for you. I think you might have bigger problems. But yeah. <laughs> I would not mess with a Bryce Young line. But, yeah, it's been uh, it's been tough to watch, specifically the passing defense. I think the front seven's gotten a little bit better. But There's an entire chance that this Packers game changes the narrative around Bryce Young. And it goes from him <laughs> potentially being a bust, he needs help, to, wow, look at what he can do. Look at all these throws he made. And it's going to happen against my team oh. for the third straight week. I don't know how they turn it around. It's going to be on Christmas Eve, so maybe there's a Christmas miracle yeah, that, potentially that, in play. Yeah, defense shows up. But, yeah, the only real props that I have for this week are A.J. Dillon, anytime touchdown. I have next to that note, I have please, please, please in all caps. He has to score against somebody. The Panthers don't, like, necessarily have a good defense, but as we were kind of talking about before the show, their pass defense is actually phenomenal when you look at it from just numbers. On paper, they're great. But that's because... Like, what were you saying? Nobody in their right mind is throwing against the Panthers in the third and fourth quarter because they're up yeah, a, lot. a lot. The Panthers have won two games this year. So just <laughs> by default, you're not going to see people throwing a whole lot against this team unless the Panthers upset you and you are the Atlanta Falcons. Then then you will throw. Yeah, and in, in this game, the Packers are five-point road favorites with an over-under of 37.5. I think both of those are kind of nasty. Yeah. The only thing I could really lean towards would be the over 37.5. That's just because the Packers' defense is terrible and our offense is clicking. Mm -hmm. So in theory, that should work. But in a game where Packers are probably going to try and run the ball a good amount, I don't know. I you're pretty much if you're betting on the total, you're betting on the Panthers to be able to score, which in theory they should against the Packers' awful defense. But at the same time, like the Packers' defense has looked good at times. There was a little moment with Joe Barry there where. Hold on, he just beat Pat Mahomes. There were people apologizing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm staying away from this one entirely, and I've talked about it before, but I never do bet on Packers games. Not with not against spread or totals. I just want to keep that separate from my my heart and my wallet. That's mm-hmm. what I want to do. I see you have a Jordan Love prop. Yeah, this is me um completely separating myself from my Bears fandom. I think we're gonna see Sean Clifford. Oh, <laughs> oh in think, a good way. Yeah. In a good way. No, no, no. Okay, no one's okay, getting hurt. Okay, okay, Knock on wood. Okay, Nobody's okay. getting hurt. I think it's that much of a blowout. So I'm taking Jordan Love under 33 and a half passing attempts. I think A.J. Dillon, whether he finds the promised land or not, is going to have another good day on the ground. I think whoever ends up being in that backfield, because Aaron Jones is questionable, again, is going <laughs> to do fine. I don't think Jordan Love needs to play all four quarters. I honestly think, I mean, look at this scenario, right? And I hate playing narratives, but... You know, we have some numbers to support it here and that the Panthers have just lost so many games. And the Packers, we just said it at the beginning of this episode, it's do or die. So you have a team with their back against the wall in this cluster in the NFC with pretty much control of their own destiny. They're going to need a little bit of help, but if they can go 3-0 in the next three weeks, they're good against far and away the worst team in the NFL. If that doesn't scream dangerous blowout scenario, I'm not sure what does. I honestly think they could win this thing by 20, 30 points, and Sean Clifford's playing a driver too. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to go under passing attempts. That sounds crazy, but if there's a time to do it, I mean, this team, there's fires under chairs right now. It does sound great to me, and the Packers only being five-point favorites, coming off a loss while the Panthers are coming off a win. In theory, that does point well to the Packers. They need it more. They want it more. The Panthers, they don't own the pick, but... Right. This is their... Their season. This right is now. it. This yeah. is it. Right. This is it. And, and I couldn't geez. find a more vulnerable opponent than what used to be Frank Reich's team. Yeah, what used to be. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Uh, canceled list for this week. I don't have any additions, but I do want to talk about the Chargers firing Brandon Staley. We mentioned Fine. it earlier. They lost 63 to 21 in a disaster game. He probably should have been fired at halftime. Yeah. But I'm proud to say that I canceled the Chargers. I fired Brandon Staley myself about yeah. two weeks ago. I cut fired ties. him. Yep, cut ties, said no more of that. And it worked out. You know, the canceled list is here to show us who we, to remind us, 
The Steelers hurt me. Right. The Falcons hurt me. The Chargers hurt me. The Panthers hurt me. I don't want to let them hurt me again, so I cancel them. <sighs> the Chargers are such big catfishes because if you look at them, if you just look at the personnel across the board, specifically on defense as well, and obviously if the offense was healthy, if Mike Williams and Keenan Allen could stay on the field at the same time, you love them. Mm -hmm. But you look at everything they've been about the last two years. Two years ago, they're in a game against the Raiders. There's a couple minutes left in overtime. All you have to do is essentially throw in the white flag <laughs> and say, we're going to tie. Yeah. And then the Raiders and the Chargers make the playoffs. Brandon Staley decided to go for it, trigger whatever was going on over in Las Vegas, and they just outright won it. Yep. Okay, then we go to last year. Oh, we're playing the Jags. This team doesn't really have any playoff experience either. And we had this sizable lead going into <laughs> halftime. Surely we can't screw this what up. Was it 27 nothing? Yep. Yeah. Boy, were we wrong. <laughs> um, and now we go here. The stars are supposed to be aligning. Mm -hmm. Herbert is supposed to be another year more mature. We already know about the arm talent. We're getting Keenan Allen back. We're getting Mike Williams back. We're getting Joshua Palmer all on the same field. And the defense is still stacked, but we're starting to get close to some of those contracts that are very expensive. And what are they, 5-9? and nine? <laughs> They're terrible. <laughs> I mean, the icing on the cake was giving up 63 points. Yeah. But I agree. I think this could have been done months ago. Yeah. Then the other thing I have on there is uh, the Falcons just continuing to be a disaster. I'm so glad I canceled Thank them. You, They're Smith. one score games. <laughs> I'm done with it. Yeah, Arthur Smith, he should just be fired for cause. Just cause. Yeah. You know, he, he keeps doing these interviews where he's like, I don't care about your fantasy team. Yeah, that's not what we're asking, dude. Why don't you give the ball to Bijan Robinson? Yeah. They lost to the Jets or uh, the Panthers. I think he had seven carries. It was something. And it's not like they were getting blown out. No. It was a relatively close game. Yeah. They could still run the ball. I know I know Ritter sucks, but that's different. That's that's not even so. Then run the ball. Then hand the ball <laughs> yeah. off. Then do what every team with an incompetent quarterback that they can't get rid of has done in hit the history of football and hand the ball off yeah. to oh, I don't know, who we were touting as a combination of Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry in a draft profile. Maybe we should give B shot. Yeah, <laughs> I have no clue. What they're doing? They're not bad enough to fire anybody, in my opinion. They're going to play, though. We have potential and upside card. But what could have been? I think they could have yeah. been a 9-10 win team this year. Sure. Yeah, make the playoffs, win the division. Sure. Yeah, and maybe they still you know, sneak in and backdoor that. But yeah. I, it doesn't look too promising now. Yeah, they're two or three games behind the Bucks now, and yeah. they're behind the Saints as well. Second round of the playoffs in fantasy football started this week, or starts tonight. Yep. Oh, boy. A lot of different matchups that you got to worry about. There's different things like running backs that are hurt, whether you should start their backup or not. What do you do in round two? Yeah, I have some locks. I will start off with some advice. You do not owe it to anybody on your team just because they've been a consistent starter. Oh, yeah, to you do. start them now. Yeah, you oh, do. no, no, no. Oh, come okay, on. Okay, specifically, no, no. if they've stuck it through for you, <laughs> that is fine. If they've gotten you through some tough times and you have some emotional attachment, I'm not going to tell you not mm -hmm. to do it. If the matchup is terrible, though, mm -hmm. I'm talking going up against, let's say Nico Collins has really come through clutch for you. I don't care if he's healthy. I have him. I don't think I'm starting him against a Browns team that's giving up what is it, 140 passing yards a game? Yeah. So I will say if they've stuck it out for you and they have an average to you know adequate matchup, fine. But if person number one who has stuck it through for you is facing the toughest passing defense and you have a competent backup that's facing the easiest defense, I mean, you've got to pay some attention to matchups. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. If someone's gotten you through some tough times and you want to ride with them, so be it. But don't let that blind you from like a matchup with the Browns in, in bad weather. Right? It's a tough conversation to have with your players, though, letting them know that they're not making it onto yeah, the roster for round two. We appreciate your service, but goodbye. You will not be getting a ring this year. <laughs> yeah, no. But, no, uh, they earned the ring. Oh, yeah, you'll the get ring. the ring. You, you won't get any like actual mm -hmm. recognition for what you did, but you'll get the <laughs> ring. Um, but some playoff locks, some really good uh, matchups this week. Yeah, this is going to seem biased, but Justin Fields against Arizona. Weak opposition. Now, typically quarterbacks against a team that – in theory, the Bears should handily beat. Isn't the best play, but he's dual threat. I think they're going to use him out in the open field a lot. This Bears team's coming off a rough week. Justin Fields scored less than 10 points for the third time this year, wow. but it was against the best passing defense in the league. I would say there's a bit of a gap in difficulty between the Browns. The defense is the only reason. If you want to claim Joe Flacco's capturing a little vintage magic, that's fine. But really, the only reason they're doing this well is their defense in the running game. And now you go up against the Cardinals team that's Probably trying to get Marvin Harrison Jr. So, I don't know. I, I think Fields has a pretty good matchup. Garrett Wilson against Washington. I'm aware Garrett Wilson's ceiling has been mitigated all year long by subpar quarterback play. Also aware that the team he's playing is Washington, and they're allowing the most passing yards per game at 265. And then I just have the starting Bills running back. <laughs> of course, James Cook goes for a career career game, and now he's questionable. Yep. Um, if it's not him, maybe it's Latavius Murray. 
Damian Harris. Regardless of who they end up going with, they're going up against the Chargers, who we've just talked about, not in the best spot right now. They're allowing the fifth amount, fifth most amount of fantasy points to running back. So really, I'm just trying to capitalize on weak opposition here. Again, if you have Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, that's one of those I'm really not going to sit them regardless of who they play. But if you've got some of those people in the you know 5 to 10, 10 to 15, among their respective position range, maybe I'm not if they're going up against a really tough team. So just something to consider. The Bills are definitely going to be running the ball a lot. They're 12-point favorites yep. on the road in L.A. Oh yeah. It's going to be a bloodbath. So they're going to be running the ball all game long, and the Chargers are just going to be laying down for them mm-hmm. to do it. I don't even know, like, if you're like Khalil Mack or Nick Bosa or Joey Bosa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, other Bosa. Yeah. Like, are you even playing in these games? You're banged up. There's no reason to. Your season's over, and yeah. you're getting paid enough money to sit. I don't know. We, we, we're talking about the Chargers too much. Yeah. Let's take a break. Give them too much of your time. Yeah, <laughs> let, we'll, we'll go to break on uh, primetime picks over on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. Welcome back into primetime picks on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. I'm Charlie Dern. He's Corey Sparks. We've got some picks to make, Corey. We've got money to be made. It's time to actually do it. I know that we say that a lot. <laughs> But it has to happen now, okay? I'm two games under 500 against the spread. I'm one touchdown scorer above 500. I need some separation. I need some profit here. I'm starting out with Cardinals plus four at Chicago. What the heck? At Chicago. (laughs) Is that two weeks in a row? That's two weeks in a row. (laughs) Two weeks back, I did bet on the Bears against the Lions. That worked out well. Last week, I bet against the Bears on the Browns. They pushed that one. I should have just gone money line. I even said that on the air. Yeah. Cardinals this week, plus four on the road. Book it. The Bears haven't done a single thing in my mind's eye to be four-point favorites over anybody. If they're home, that maybe that gives them like a point, point and a half. Right. Maybe. I guess because of the conditions in your Arizona, you're traveling. Sure, whatever. I'm not a Cardinals believer. I don't even think they're any good. But Kyler's healthy, and he's actually like – doing something with them they didn't they didn't have much of a chance earlier in the season I thought the Cardinals would have been rolling over by now in their last six games the Cardinals are five and one against the spread against Chicago okay they're also four and two straight up on the road in their last six games in Chicago I really like the Cardinals here for whatever reason they get up and play against the Bears I'm going with the Bears there The total on that one is 43 so they do think some points are going to be scored I like that I think that means the Cardinals keep it close, even if they lose like 21-18, I cover. So I'm good. Four points is too many. If it was a field goal, I might consider else. But since it's only a, a four points, I'm taking it with them. I see that for your first pick. You like the Giants? This is egregious. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like the Giants, but I love plus 12. <sighs> I, I'll play the divisional opponent card. We just saw it. I thought everything was sealed with the Falcons beating a horrible Panthers team, and Arthur Smith, as he's done so many times this year, proved me wrong. So um, the Eagles have not beaten a divisional opponent by greater than a possession yet, and this is supposed to be nearly north of two. They've split with the Cowboys, and they barely beat the Commanders both times. Um, I'm betting this heavily on a blowout. When these two teams, year after year, see each other more than others, I mean, I'm just not a big fan of that. I mean, unless there's a ton of roster turnover, let's not act like the Eagles and Giants don't know each other very well. I'm actually pretty dang confident in this one, in all honesty. It's such a big spread. If it was plus 7, plus 8, maybe I'd think about it, but two full possessions, no, I'm, it, I'm good. I think they keep it close. You Like, where do the points come from for the Giants? Tommy DeVito's leading them down the field? Like, I don't know. Probably Tommy DeVito out in the open field. That secondary in Philly is not good. I mean, we've seen that. If, if, there's anything, if anything has been their Achilles heel outside of Jalen Hurts being sick and throwing a deep ball when he only needed 15 yards to extend the game against Seattle, um, outside of that, if anything has been proven, it's their secondary has been torn up. I mean, we saw the Cowboys do it. We've seen a lot of teams get into slugfests or even shootouts with Philly just because the secondary is not good. So I think Tommy DeVito maybe doesn't throw for 300 yards, but he gets some people out in the open field and has some fun with it. Maybe some dump-off passes to Saquon. I don't know how he does it, but I think this one's respectable. Eagles coming off a loss. Yeah. Need a win. Three losses. I think three that, losses? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, that might be a trap. The Eagles might blow him out like by 21 or something. I hope not. We'll see. We actually have the same game for our, our second oh. picks here. I have the total. You have a side. Colts-Falcons. Falcons are one-point favorites at home with an over-under of 44.5. I'm going under. 
Okay. Under 44 and a half. Yeah, like I'm not it. good at totals. I think I've gotten them wrong every time I've done them on this show. So odds are this lands right on the key number of 45. That would be classic. <laughs> in seven uh, Falcons home games this year, they've gone under in five of them. Problem is the Colts are an over team. They, they're like 10 and four or something uh, on score. overs. They score really well. But what they do is they score at home primarily. Okay. So this is kind of another bet that Taylor Heineke is not going to be able to do anything. He's not much of an upgrade at all over Desmond Ritter, if he's even an upgrade in your eyes. Again, with this being right below the 45, I'm a little bit scared, but I just – the Falcons don't score. Their offense is horrible. Mm-hmm. They have all these first-round picks, and their offense sucks, so I'm going under. I'm going under. You have the side. Yeah. I – why did I do plus one? I'm just going to do – Colts money line. All right. I have no worries about this one. They're five and one in their last six. They're on a roll. They're actually trending towards the postseason after losing what was supposed to be their franchise guy at the beginning. Mm-hmm. QB carousel in Atlanta. We just talked about it. I agree with you. I think a lateral move is what's being made here. Heineke is not going to move this team mountains by any means, especially if Arthur Smith doesn't get the ball in his playmaker's hands anyway. So you're getting in a competition with the Jets at this point in Atlanta. Like how many different times can we switch that QB spot? I don't think that's really a recipe for success no matter how much you experiment. And uh, Indy is 15-2 and two against Atlanta in their wow. last 17. That that really jumped off the page to me. I think this is just a textbook case where Indy's got their number, and I think the personnel on Indy's side right now, I'll take them over, over the Falcons, who really don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I canceled the Falcons for a reason. I have yeah. no read on them. It, any given week, like every number you could throw at me would make sense for why it could be the Colts, and then the Falcons will just win by a field goal. Uh, it's just the way they roll. It's I unbelievable. Swear. Touchdown scores, um, my first touchdown, or my only touchdown score is Brees Hall. This is probably just a dumb idea because <laughs> I'm relying on the Jets to move the ball. They have the worst offense in the league, but they scored, I think, seven points last week. They need to get it going. They have to get it going. They have no choice. Right. If somebody's going to score on their team, it's not going to be Trevor Simeon. It's not going to be, well, Tim Boyle got cut. It's not going to be him. Yikes. Garrett Wilson, maybe, sure. I don't know. They, they don't have many options. So, Brees Hall, he's due to score one. He's got to get one. He's going to probably be like a fantasy hero this week for people in the playoffs or something. I don't know. But, yep. yeah, I've got Brees Hall to score a touchdown. I see you have Trey McBride yeah, going against your Bears. Tight end route. I do think – I'm going kind of with the Bears here because I am – I do think they're going to win. And as a result, I see a pass-heavy scheme here for Kyler. Now, McBride doesn't have the most tight end red zone targets by any means. He only has nine at this point in the season. But he is high usage, 29 targets over the course of the last three weeks. That's more than anybody else on that team right now. Hollywood's hurt. Dorch is hurt. So we've got two questionable receivers there. And, again, Chicago's favored by four. So I think this is a team that works from behind, has to throw the ball. I do like Chicago's linebacking core, but if there's one thing they're not great at, it is coverage to an extent in man-to-man. So if we can just get a little seam up the middle by Trey McBride, get a touchdown, and then the Bears score the other 40, I'm fine with it. I can see it. I see the vision on that. Yeah, Yeah, get a little mismatch across the middle. Sure, just like a sit route. Literally just sit there. Yeah, only real worry with the Cardinals players in my mind is just they love James Conner, and Kyler can take it in himself at any point. So that's just always a little scary. I don't think their wide receivers really ever are doing too much. Marquise Brown's fine. Right. Moving on to the parlay. We have to hit this. Uh, we have yeah. to. We have to. We have to. We have to at least hit one more before the season ends so we can only finish like 10 units down on the parlay. Because it's – we lost I, – I lost track. We stopped keeping track on here. I cannot wait to wipe the slate. Yeah. Clean. Just move on from it. <laughs> I have the Jaguars, Buccaneers under 42 and a half. This is just over the key number of 42. Key numbers being numbers that scores end on the most. So 42, 45, 48. 51, you, you see how it goes with threes. Jags, Bucks, under 42 and a half. I, I can see this being like a slow, like they're sleepwalking kind of game to start. Jags offense doesn't look any good. The Bucks offense looked great last week against the Packers, yeah. but I don't think that can be repeated to that extent. So I think 42 and a half is a little high, especially with the Jags struggling. The Jags are road underdogs in this one i don't think the buccaneers are that good and i also don't think the jaguars are that bad right i don't really know what to make out of that so just the under for me okay i'm gonna go jalen warren over 68 and a half rushing plus receiving yards i saw 43 and a half rushing yards and then i saw that the steelers are giving him the ball on the ground like nine to ten times a game so as unfortunate as that is he is a pretty involved pass catcher actually 
one of the more involved pass catchers on the team. He was sitting third for a while. Cincinnati is opposition. They're allowing 4.7 yards a carry. We've got that narrative again where the Steelers' playoff hopes are on the line, backs against the wall. I would like to think they lean harder on the more efficient running back, and it's not close. Warren has Najee covered by like a yard and a half per carry. So really hoping that happens, but I like the total yards line here. So Jalen Warren over 68 rushing yards and receiving yards combined. Jags box under 42 and a half. And then typically we pick on this Packers prop. I am I only have A.J. Dillon anytime touchdown down, and I'm done putting that in here because just I'm not even – it doesn't happen. Uh, I do love yours. Honors Carlson over two and a half extra points. I They're going to score. Yeah. Some way, shape, or form, this team will f- find a way to score against the Panthers. Yeah. I think so, too. Two and a half, he's going to end up missing the third one. It's going to be course. classic, like yeah. like you They'll read go about. For two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll go for two for no reason or something bad's going to happen. That's how we'll lose our parlay. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of Primetime Picks on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. As always, good luck this week on week 16 of the NFL. For Corey Sparks, I'm Charlie Dern. Have a good one, everybody.